autonomy uh, most of the times uh, can be seen as an enemy of teachers because some people think that if we teach our students to be autonomous uh, it means that uh, they're going to be alone forever and we are going to lose our jobs and this is not real we can uh, teach autonomy to students to make them feel more confident to make them uh, become more active thinkers and uh, therefore make the process of learning a language much more enjoyable and much more effective okay so uh, the title is autonomy studies the usage of learning strategies in our EFL context I, I have adjusted the title because in order to get to this uh, study I have made we have conducted uh, carried out many studies throughout uh, the course at UFIS. So, Carla, uh, Cesarino, uh, Luciana Ferrari, Lívia Pontes, all the professors at UFIS helped me and helped all my colleagues very much with this project that they have there uh, to teach us become researchers throughout uh, the process of getting a degree. So this is awesome. And all the colleagues that are here, that are studying now at UFIS, you can't believe this helps this works a lot. So you have to be confident in yourself and do it and use them because they are there for this to help us. Okay? So I'm here today. I was nobody when I got to this and now I'm in love with researching, uh, doing projects, helping my students, helping my colleagues at uh, Centro Municipal de Idiomas and this is uh, my life now. Uh, spreading the word on autonomy. Uh, Karen Curry was also my advisor because Carla was expecting Yuri and then she had to uh, step out and then Karen gave me all the support just like uh, Carla so I have to thank them very much for helping me out. So, to start, let's contextualize a little. What is autonomy in language learning? Before we go to language learning, let's go step by step and understand the concept of autonomy. So for Denso, autonomy is about people taking more control over their, over their lives. So uh, when, you, we, when you are autonomous, we can have more power on what we do, on what we choose to do. We are more uh, aware of our actions. So we have the total consciousness of what we are doing. So this is autonomy. And then, autonomy in learning, wh whether uh, can be a language or anything else, autonomy in learning is about people taking more control of their learning in classrooms and outside them. So this is the most important part. Uh, we do not teach people to study only inside the classrooms. We teach people to transform these people uh, into uh, educators, future educators, future engineers, future doctors, professionals in general. So we have to think uh, about the process of teaching and learning as a group inside the classroom and outside the classroom. And finally, autonomy in language learning is about people take more uh, control of the purposes for which they learn languages and the ways in which they learn them. So what do I study English or Spanish or Italian for? What are I doing here in this classroom? So the students sometimes, they do not even know what they're doing or what their purposes are inside the classroom. So the teacher is responsible for helping these people because the teacher is a facilitator. The teacher, he, he has the knowledge, he has the experience to guide these students. So that's, that's how we can teach autonomy for our students. Uh, let's continue. What are learning strategies? This study uh, is focused only on showing uh, a small research that I, I conducted with Carla in UFIS, Centro de Línguas, and I wanted to know the strategies students were using. So, uh, the core of this study is uh, learning strategies. Okay? So let's uh, define learning strategies. So, according to Hinkle, 
The learning strategies are the specific things that one does to learn. Anything that we do is a strategy. Okay? So the variety of strategies is huge. Depends on our preferences, our styles, etc. Uh, learning strategies are special ways of processing information that enhance comprehension, learning, or retention of the information. So, if we want to be more successful teachers, if we want to make a change in our students' life, I think we have to take this into consideration because uh, we are going to teach them how to learn. So, teaching strategies is teaching how to learn better in a much more enjoyable way. And then, Luciana Ferrari helped me very much in my fourth term at Rubis because when I was uh, presenting my first draft of project, I, I only thought about autonomy as being a self-taught student because I am self-taught in English. I didn't go to a regular course. I just learned by playing video games as a lot of people do now and you have students like this. Uh, we learn with music, with video games, with movies and etc. So I decided to start this kind of research because I wanted to help people to learn just like I did. And then uh, I only thought about autonomy and the autonomous behavior uh, as being as a self-taught person. And this is not real. Uh, Luciana said, Junior, I think there's a slight difference between being autonomous and a self-taught self student. And that day changed my life and my research. And then I was well oriented to do the right thing. Thank God and thank Luciana. <laughs> So, the difference is, an autonomous learner, uh, the autonomous learners, they understand the purpose and process of learning, and they are able to choose from available tools and resources to create a productive learning environment. So, they are aware, totally aware of the, what they are doing or, or when they are learning something or a language, in our case. And the, <clears throat> the autonomous learners, even though they can do a lot of things alone, they still need the teachers. They are dependent on teacher instruction. So they have to go to school. They do not learn all by themselves. Okay? Uh, and now, let's see the definition for a self-taught student. I got it from Oxford, the dictionary. And basically, a self-taught student is the person who has learned things uh, by himself without any help of others and he makes use of their own, uh, his own techniques in order to learn by himself or herself themselves. For example, I use video games and many people, you, many people use other strategies. Okay? Uh, and then we can make an inference. Autonomous learners, they are not necessarily self-taught students. But self-taught students, they are indeed autonomous learners because it's in it. It's an ability. And we can teach this ability. This is learnable and teachable. And that's my objective here with this study, to help you get in touch with this idea and help me spread the word. So this study aims to answer the following questions. What are the learning strategies used by students, whether consciously or not, uh, during their language learning process? And which are the most and least frequent strategies used? And by answering this initial, initial question, this study hopes to make teachers and students aware that there are a variety of ways to deal with the process of learning a new language. So, it's not for, only for teachers, it's for the students as well. Is it only for English teachers and students? No, it's for everybody. For Portuguese, uh, foreign Portuguese students, or Italian students, Japanese students, French students, and teachers. So we can, all of us can profit from this uh, kind of behavior, the autonomous behavior. So, Holek uh, defines, he is the first, the pioneer of the autonomous studies. And then he says that, uh, autonomy is the ability to take charge of one's learning. 
So we assume, we, no, we take control of our learning, of, our, of the process of learning a language. Uh, autonomous is a process, not a product. This is a phrase from Greece. So autonomy is very well known in all over the planet, but we do not put into action. And then uh, we can understand that it's up to us, the Brazilian teachers, to start doing this in Brazil. Not wait for people to come here and come on, let's, let's get to know autonomy. No, we can do it now, let's do it now. And then let's think about the process. This is not something that we can buy from a courseware sold on the internet. We can develop this ability. We can teach, we can study about it. So it's up to us. Uh, and then we do not become autonomous. We are also, uh, we are always walking towards uh, a bit of an autonomous behavior. And then we are gonna be more successful in our studies. As I said before, when we deal with autonomy, a lot of people think about uh, negating uh, the role of the teacher, and this is not real, because the teacher plays an important role in the instruction of these strategies, in the instruction of the autonomous behavior. I usually say that when we are trying to learn a language, it's, like, it's just like going on a diet, because we have to start uh, adopting new attitudes, new actions in order to learn. But a lot of students, most of them, and most of us who study, uh, we do not know this. And then we are uh, hoping that that instruction will give everything that we need. But this is not also true because uh, a language, fluency in a language, is the ability of communicating, getting by, living and surviving the world. It's not about uh, memorizing grammar or being able to complete exercises. I love grammar. I am a grammar guy, but I have to, to understand that if we want to learn a lot of languages or two or three, we have to understand that we are learning a language to communicate. And if people are understand us, that's okay. That's good. This researcher, she's a Chinese researcher, and she says, the teacher plays an indispensable role by acting as a facilitator and modifying material uh, for the students when necessary. So we are there for them, because they have the computers, they have internet, they have Facebook, they have blogs, they have everything, they have grammars, they have audio material available for them on the internet. We have as well. I have learned French using a blog from a a teacher from Minas Gerais. I downloaded it, it was for free, I printed it, and then I started studying by myself and I learned French. We can do it, I didn't pay any cents for it. So, we have to start thinking about autonomy as a very powerful tool in our lives. Let, let me skip this because I think I'm not gonna have time enough. Uh, Let's read only the second one. Rebecca Oxford, she has uh, said that the appropriate strategies used is an important factor that differentiates more and less effective language learners and that useful strategies are both teachable and learnable. So we can do it, everybody can. Let's try to start having contact with the autonomy behavior in our lives and we will see that our work will be easier, much easier and enjoyable because we will have the responses, the positive feedback coming from our students and their smiles as well. So this is the best part of teaching. We teachers, we like to, even though our salaries are, aren't great, but when we have the response of one student, it's awesome. So I think that we can uh, increase the number of positive feedbacks. Not only one, but two, three, five, maybe. Who knows? Uh, and then, spread and chicken leaf, they say that the, the forms, the way that we can do, that we can modify material, that we can suggest uh, attitudes for students to become autonomous or to have an autonomous uh, way of studying. But uh, I'm 
going to talk about the strategies and then it's the same. I'm going to skip it. So this was a quantitative, quantitative approach. I only wanted to know if the students were using the strategies or not. And then uh, I wanted to measure the frequency also. Uh, I used a, a, a questionnaire with a five-point Likert scale. And a Likert scale is a, uh, a scale that measures the attitude of a person towards the topic studied. So in my case, I wanted to know the frequency. So I developed the questionnaire with the frequency of usage. Uh, I also used uh, the mode as a means of measuring what were the most recurrent answers in each point of the scale. Because I wanted to generalize to start data analysis and to have some responses, some outcomes for us. And then I have to group and then get the most recurrent responses. Uh, the questionnaire was revised and validated for a long time because we wanted to make sure it was concrete, it was safe, the students would understand and give the proper answers that we were expecting. It was also a controlled uh, study because I just wanted to know the strategies, if they were using or not. So I didn't have uh, to leave them by themselves. No, I just have to apply and uh, so uh, some questions if they have doubts and etc. So there, it was a co totally controlled stu uh, study. Uh, a pilot test was also done with a with a group of ten students, and then they helped me to organize better the questionnaire the questionnaires, uh, and they also helped me to change one point of the scale. The first point of the scale, the frequency, script, the frequency scale, I chose to be always. I always use this strategy, but these students, they, said, they told me, Junior, always is a very strong word. Let's change for it frequently. And then I, I totally agreed. It was awesome because we always, it's 100% of the time. And we do not watch television 100% of the time. I do not play video games 100% of the time. So they were totally correct. So they were part of the process of building this questionnaire. They were very important too. And all of them, all the 34 students, they, uh, 34 students from two different classes, from the basic phase of the course, the first level and the last level of the, the, the beginner phase, they, they uh, wanted to participate uh, and then didn't have anything against the study. But they, if they had uh, anything against, it was totally normal and they could ask, uh, choose to participate or not participate. So these strategies, I'm sorry for the foreigners, but the questionnaire was paid in Portuguese, so I'm going to read very fast and then we go back to the analysis. So, uh, there were eight categories of the strategies. They are, are going to be presented now. The first category was the general strategies. What are the general things that we can do to learn a language? So, the first strategy was, estudo inglês quando tenho tempo livre. Tento pensar nas coisas que vejo em inglês. Tento entrar em contato com a língua inglesa fora da sala de aula, música, TV, filmes, videogames, internet, etc. Vou ao centro de alta aprendizagem do curso de inglês. Navego em sites em inglês. Utilizo sites que ensinam inglês. So, this is a kind of uh, general behavior towards learning a language. The second category was the listening strategies. Tento ouvir o CD de áudio antes de ler o texto escrito da atividade. Assisto a programas de TV e filmes com áudio em inglês. Escuto músicas em inglês. Tenho, tento compreender a letra da música enquanto escuto. Procuro as letras daquelas músicas para melhor entender e acompanhá-la. Tento transcrever as atividades de listening, conversations, livros, etc. Gosto de ouvir ou fico curioso quando as pessoas conversam em inglês. Eat conversation. Eat conversation. Did I write eat? <laughs> no, no. Okay, okay. The third category was reading. 
Procuro ler livros e revistas e artigos, etc., em inglês. Quando leio, não me prendo a palavras que não sei e tento entender o texto como um todo. Configuro a língua inglesa como padrão nos meus eletrônicos, computador, celular, MP3, jogos, etc. Assisto filmes com a legenda em inglês. Then we have the next category, writing. Faço todos os meus exercícios de inglês. Escrevo em inglês com meus amigos no MSN, Orkut, e-mail, etc. This research is quite old. It's three years old, so at that time, Orkut was uh, the trend fashion in Brazil. And mantenho um diário em inglês. This is the polemic one. Speaking. Tento falar o máximo de inglês com amigos, professores, famílias, etc. Falo sozinho em inglês. This is my favorite one. <laughs> uh, pronunciation. Quando escuto algo em inglês, presto atenção nos sons e entonações. Tento imitar e pratico a pronúncia dos áudios que contém falantes da língua inglesa. E tento cantar minhas músicas favoritas em inglês, mesmo sem saber a letra. This is extremely important. Oh yeah, the old, yeah, yeah. Grammar. Uso gramática de inglês para estudar estruturas. Costumo fazer exercícios de gramática para praticar. Reviso meus textos para procurar meus erros. Anoto tópicos e estruturas gramaticais que tenho dificuldades para estudar depois. Tento traduzir pequenos textos do inglês para o português. E vice-versa. Vocabulary. Tento traduzir textos. Uh, it's a very word uh, intertwined strategies, both for grammar and vocabulary. So they are also in this category. Study. Utilizo dicionários português, inglês, 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 português. Procuro o significado de novas palavras e analiso seus possíveis usos. Assisto filmes e anoto algum vocabulário que não entendo. Procuro as letras das minhas músicas favoritas em inglês e pesquiso o significado. So, these are the strategies. It's a total of 36 strategies uh, into eight different categories. And then, all this data was tabulated uh, from all the questionnaires, and then uh, we could see the total of answers in each strategy, and then define see what was the most recurrent strategy in each point of the scale. I'd like to show you very quickly uh, the questionnaire because it's important. So, escreva na coluna com que provença você pratica cada ação com o objetivo de aprender inglês. Utilize a seguinte legenda. Frequentemente é, a primeira, é o primeiro ponto da, da escala. Às vezes, raramente ou nunca. E a quinta foi porque eu estava tentando fazer mais coleta de dados para outras pesquisas. Eu uso, mas não com o intuito de aprender inglês. Então, a gente tem aí a, a lista de estratégias, eles receberam esse questionário e tiveram só que marcar A, B, C, D ou E. Ah, the mode uh, was applied in order to foreground the most recurring scores in each strategy. And then I want to show you the mode as well. Very fast. Here. When I started uh, organizing these scores, I saw that the fifth point of the scale, I used this strategy, but not with the purpose of learning English. Uh, this point of the scale didn't receive answers. Only one or two students, they marked So, I completely eliminated it from the uh, research, from the study, and I only used the four points of the scale. Uh, uh, frequently, sometimes, hardly ever, and never. No. Study three, please. Three. Okay, mode. Mode, here. Excuse me. So, most numerical recurrence of the learning strategy. For example, strategy number one. So, the most recurrent point of the scale was B, sometimes, as vezes. Okay? For example, strategy number three. 22 students out of 34 that participated in this study, they claim to use this strategy that I don't remember it now as 
frequently. They frequently make use of this strategy. Okay? Some of them got very high scores on the fourth uh, point of the scale, which stands for never. So I could answer the first question of the research with this questionnaire. There are many actions, there are many things that they do frequently to learn uh, a language, but there are others that they do not know and they do not do at all. And this is something important for us. Uh, we could talk about these strategies for them. We are going to discuss it in the conclusions. Let's go back. Okay, so I just said this, the fifth point was eliminated. And then after this, uh, the use of the mode, I grouped the categories into two uh, sections. Part A, frequently strategies, and part D, never used strategies. So I could, I could know what strategies they use it with a higher frequency and the ones that they do not use at all. And then uh, we have the results. This is the category. Let me just talk about the first one. So, table one, the strategies which were frequently used by some students. So, we have uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13 strategies. These 13 strategies, they were highlighted by the mode. So, they were the most uh, recurrent uh, strategies in the in all the students, from all the students' uh, answers. And I, I don't know if you can see, there are some uh, with a gray shade. These ones, they were the strategies that are used for, uh, they are used for, from uh, more than 50% of the students. So they are the most favorite strategies of these students. And then we can see, Escuta músicas em inglês, gosta de ouvir, fico curioso quando alguém fala inglês, tenta entrar em contato com a língua, fora da sala de aula, tenta compreender a letra da música, quando leio não me prenda palavras que não sei, assisto programas de TV e filmes com áudio em inglês, tento cantar minhas músicas favoritas em inglês, sem saber a letra. Uh, and then, let's see the never used strategies. The first one, mantenha um diário em inglês. Why not? Why not? Let's discuss this afterwards. Then we have, vou ao centro de alta aprendizagem do curso de inglês. This school has an independent lab, an independent uh, section in the, the uh, library to help students uh, get to know these strategies, to help them become more autonomous, to help them learn better. And even so, even though it's for free, they do not go there. Why not? Reading. Configura a língua inglesa como padrão nos meus eletrônicos. This is so basic. We could learn so many functions, so many words, just by uh, setting up the cell phone, the, the social network. For example, the, our students use Facebook in Portuguese. For me, the English teachers say, come on, you are wasting your time. What are you doing here? Change it for English right now. You can learn a lot of words and share, and etc. And then you are losing, wasting your time. Reading, uh, no, grammar. Uso gramáticas de inglês para estudar estruturas. Okay, no problem. And also, these four ones, they were used, uh, they were never used by more than 50% of the students. Okay, um, what were the conclusions? All these strategies, all the 36 strategies, they were, uh, they were said to be used by these students. The only thing that uh, we, can have, uh, we, we have to pay attention to is that the frequency varied. So if they do not use all the, 30, all the 36 frequently. They use some of them frequently and some others they never use. Okay? Uh, so I like to know this. Uh, the answer for this question. Are students aware of the fact that they are using strategies that could be used as strongly supported tools throughout their learning process? They are using some strategies. They are using a lot of strategies, but do they know the power that these actions have 
towards their learning. This is up to us teachers to help them understand this rule that the strategies have in our lives. The questionnaire used in this study could be a great instrument to help teachers, to help us identify the strategies used by their students in order to reinforce the ones that students already know and teach the strategies that they are not acquainted with yet. So we can use this, this questionnaire, no problem at all, and apply in our classrooms in the first day of the class to know what do you do to learn a language. And then, by the responses, we can start developing side projects, we can develop different activities, we can vary the way we teach to cover and to reach out to all kinds of students, just like Robert Gardner says in his theory of the multiple intelligences, that we, could, we have to try to reach out to all types of students. So, with these kinds of strategies, we can help uh, people that like music, people that like structures, that are usually the adults, and because they are more logical, people that like arts, for example, the, the drama process, in role play, it's awesome to help students to create, to invent, to use that context, the, those contexts, in a more effective, in a more real way. It's not only a matter of completing an exercise. And this research school, which was Centro de Línguas da UFES, it has a lab for independent study with tutors all the time all day long and a lot of extra material to help them and even so they do not go there.